We all saw what happened yesterday at the Capitol. We all know what happened. So I just wanted to make this video really quickly so we can touch base. And I'd like to be able to give you my honest opinion on everything, but I just simply can't because I don't want to risk it on YouTube. And so if you want to hear my honest opinion on it, I did a live stream yesterday for an hour that will be archived on the website for members to access. And it's honestly, I think, one of the best streams that we've ever done in terms of the sheer quality of my takes. But I don't know. I want to keep it relaxed here. We're still very busy over here planning for the Texas move, the new studio, the anti-porn dissertation, all that stuff. But I have to touch on this at least a little bit, despite the fact that the energy is a little low right now. And at first I thought it was because of winter, like, you know, the country's over here collapsing and I'm like, hmm, maybe I'm a little down because it's winter. Maybe it's seasonal. Maybe it's just because it's cold out. But yeah, I've got four points of bad news from yesterday that we need to address. And then I've got five points of good news that we should also address. And again, if you want to hear a more detailed take on what happened yesterday, please go check it out on the website. That's how you can support the channel. They just banned our discord yesterday for literally no reason, but they use things like this as an excuse to clamp down on people with the wrong opinions. And so as we'll talk about, we need your support now more than ever. And I mean, we as in like every independent right wing content creator or commentator, whatever you want to call us, because ultimately we work for you and it's going to get a lot more difficult to do this in the near future and also in the broader timeline if the trends continue. And you might think that I'm being pessimistic. I don't think I am. I think I'm just being honest. I think I'm calling it how I see it because what happened yesterday happened and now it's over, which means that all we can do now is look ahead to the future and deal with the consequences of that event that we're all going to face regardless of whether we were there, uh, regardless of whether we support it. None of that even matters. Like we're all implicated because we're all conservative or we're all Trump supporters or whatever. Like I won't speak for you individually, but you get what I'm saying. Like a lot of people will hear this and think that I'm condemning or disavowing the protesters, but I didn't say that. Those aren't my words. And again, I have to be very careful with my words here on YouTube, but I will say that I understand why they did what they did, not even in terms of like the way the media has glorified and enabled rioting for the last six months in this country, but I will say that there is a key difference that no one really seems to be highlighting because, of course, you know, conservatives are playing their favorite game right now, which is, can you believe the left? Look at the hypocrisy, which is just really low hanging fruit. But the key difference, and this is all that I'll say, is that one group of people hates our country so much that they're willing to risk their lives to destroy it. And the other group of people loves our country so much that they're willing to risk their lives for it. Do with that as you will. But anyways, the first point of bad news is that we poked the bear. That's really what happened. We didn't drain the swamp. We didn't overturn the results of the election. We basically just poked the bear. And now we're going to get our teeth kicked in because we simply don't have the power in society necessary to get away with something like that or even to be successful in what was trying to be achieved in the first place, if anything at all. And this is important because people will say, well, well, what about when the left riots? Or they'll say, well, I'm consistent and I condemn this on both sides. And it's like, yeah, that's great. But you have to understand that the right and the left do not exist as equals in society. And therefore, even when they act with relative similarity to each other, the results of this will not be the same because conservatives have no power or representation in society. And to this, you might say, well, well, you can't really compare six months of rioting from the left with what happened yesterday from the right. And it's like, yeah, that's the point. It doesn't even matter. We don't control the narratives and we don't write the history books. And you'd better believe that what happened yesterday will be included in the history books. And all of that rioting that we saw over the summer, the last six months, that will either be excluded or it will be documented as effectively equal to the sit-ins of the civil rights movement. Like it's one thing if you poke the bear and then it wakes up and you just plug it in the skull with like a 44 Magnum. But we basically just went in there and poked the bear and now things are gonna get really bad for us. We're basically defenseless. We're RJ, we're just RJ. We thought we were the Depelter Turbo, but it turns out we're just RJ. And so the point is, is that People on the right have been talking about the revolution, starting a revolution in this country for decades, most second amendment, all that stuff. Then we find out that we're not even powerful enough to just occupy a building without the DOJ getting after people, people getting killed, losing their jobs, et cetera. And again, I'm not saying that I support any of this. I'm just saying that we poked the bear and we're probably now going to find out having just around. That brings us to the second point of bad news, which is that because we don't control the narratives, guilt by association is now acceptable to the masses. And this is significant because there was a time where in order for them to cancel you with guilt by association, you'd have to like attend a conference where someone controversial was speaking or appear in a photograph with someone controversial, et cetera. Uh, But even then people didn't care, like who's that, right? But now because of what happened, the masses can easily be sold on the idea that Trump supporters are terrorists, they're violent rioters and they need to be dealt with, et cetera. And you might say, well, they told that to people about us anyway. So what's the difference? Well, the difference is that mass media requires mass promotion of manufactured narratives to serve the true purpose, which is just to legitimize the actions of the American regime, despite how they typically are at the expense of the American people. 
And so it's one thing if someone in a MAGA hat gets into a fight with like a Black Lives Matter protester, but for people to be coded in that type of merchandise and then go do what they did yesterday. And again, I'm only analyzing the implications of it, what it means going forward, can't comment on anything else, but we have to understand that those images and those videos will be promoted everywhere for at least the next five years. And the reason for that is that it's a different narrative. It's a different ends. An image of a guy in a MAGA hat beating up a black guy is much different than an image of a guy in a MAGA hat destroying the Capitol. And the reason is that it suits the new purpose, right? So when they needed to convince people that conservatives and Trump supporters were these racist people, yeah, okay, let's promote those images, the images of people in MAGA hats fighting Black Lives Matter people. But in post-Trump America, the ends are different. They are to portray Donald Trump as a threat to the country. Something like this can never happen again. He was a threat to our democracy, etc. And what better images to substantiate that narrative than the ones that were gathered yesterday? Regardless of whether you're in support of what happened yesterday or you're against it, you have to understand that this really is information warfare. And when you don't have any infrastructure in society, your enemy can and will convince the masses of whatever they have to in order to eliminate you from society. And that gets into our next point of bad news, which is that everything we predicted is coming true and it's even being accelerated, which is that the American regime, the establishment, the deep state, whatever you want to call it, is trying to consolidate its power in order to recover from the threat posed to it by President Trump and his movement. And for them to do that, they have to purge Trump supporters from the realm of perceived political legitimacy. So you will have the radical left and then you will have a continuation of the spineless GOP who does not represent you, or does not represent your interests, and in fact only exists to give you the illusion of choice. But at the end of the day, it's all the same and it will continue to get worse. And they will come together with the manufactured narrative of bipartisanship and national unity to condemn that which posed a legitimate threat to their power, which was President Trump and his supporters and his movement. And this is because consolidation is universal. And I forgot who said this, but this is something that I've picked up from reading Marxist theory. You can and actually, you can learn a lot about power from reading Marxist theory because Marxism is so retarded that most of the time they don't even try to explain how it's going to work. They really just instead focus on like getting into power and then basically winging it. But they said something to the effect of consolidation is universal, which means that to consolidate political power, you're also going to have to consolidate public opinion necessarily. And they've got that teed up perfectly, especially because of what happened yesterday. They are literally censoring the president of the United States, which gets to our last point, which is that the president of China is now the most powerful, demonstrably the most powerful man in the world. And that's not good. You know, we can talk more about China if you want. But right now, it's important to understand that the president of the United States, for however much longer he's going to be president, is literally being silenced. He's being subverted and betrayed by those who are supposed to be his allies. And at this point, he really has no power. And as China grows stronger, we grow weaker. And that is by design, because the problem isn't necessarily China. The problem is that the people who are supposed to be representing us have sold us out to China for the last 30 years. And they're going to continue to do so over the course of at least the next five years. Things are going to get bad. Things are going to get really bad. I wish I could sell you false hope, but the reality is that we're just going to be living through this for, for a minute. And on that note, actually, be very careful and pay very close attention to what everyone else is talking about right now. Like, really think about who's got your back and who really cares about the country versus people who are just grifting. Because that's how we got here in the first place. And I don't know if they'd be called grifters back then, but basically everyone that was supposed to defend us just decided to lie to us and then just make money for themselves. And so now we're here. But, you know... It's not all bad. We've got five points of good news, five reasons to believe that it's all going to be okay. Starting with number one, I personally am doing pretty well. I got some cool books in the mail yesterday. This morning I had a waffle. I'm excited to move to Texas, start working on all that stuff that we have planned for this year. I'm giving a speech on the updated conservative ethos, so to speak, at the University of Arizona on the 21st. So we're excited about that. But enough about me. Let's talk about you. With the second piece of good news, you're living through the collapse. That's kind of epic. You're living through the collapse of the Roman Empire. That's a pretty decent dice roll. And look, okay, gamers, is it a bummer? Yes. However, you could have been alive during something much less interesting. You could have been born in like 1875 and then die in 1900 of like tuberculosis. That's lame. And when all is said and done, None of this matters. You're not what school you went to. You're not how much money you have. All that really matters is your character and your story. And whoever has the best character and the best story wins. And given the fact that you're living through the collapse, got a pretty good story already, and then if you can even remain a good person throughout that, like you're even better. So is it bad? Yes. But sometimes it has to be bad so that it can be good, which gets to our next point of good news, which is that it's getting worse. That is so based. We all knew it was gonna have to get really bad before it could ever get better, and here we are, right on track, right on course. Sometimes you have to lose the battle to win the war. Other times you have to lose basically all the battles ever, and then maybe win the war at the last minute. That's me and you, big guy, that's us. But seriously think about the sheer political realignment that has occurred in the last 48 hours on the right. Like, we are waking up to the reality of how bad things really are, and without that happening, we would never be able to fix anything. And because we don't have the means of mass communicating just how bad it could get to everybody, the only way for them to realize that was for it to 
get that bad. So this is a difficult yet necessary step, which gets into our next point, which is that we've been thrown into the water. We have now, or at least we're starting to, you know, seriously wake up, understand the reality of our situation, the gravity of our situation. And so from there, we make a choice to either sink or swim. Because once you realize how bad it is, once you go down the rabbit hole, you now have an obligation to either consciously work to solve it or consciously choose to do nothing. In another moment, down went Alice after, never once considering how in the world she was going to get out again. I've been playing Far Cry 3 again. But the point is that it had to get worse in order for us to wake up. And now that we're waking up, what are we going to do? I don't know. But the final piece of good news, the only positive trend in the entire Western world, something that I've been prophesizing for the last three years coming to fruition, and that is the Nathaniel Abbott Revenge Tour. Of course, we're all familiar with Cameraman Badan. We love Cameraman Badan, don't we, folks? A little bit of lore here from the HFC Expanded Universe. Cameraman Badan wears many hats, and you don't even get to see everything. You just see what gets posted. I can't tell you how many times, how many hours we've spent driving to cover things for you guys, how many times we've driven across state lines to come back with no content, days spent with nothing to show. Show, and that's because we're literally just vibing. This is a guy who I've hung out with like almost every day for the last nine years, took all the same classes, all the same extracurriculars, worked at the same subway, etc. And now I'm going Texas mode. We're tagging in proxy cameraman Aldo on the journey, but cameraman Badan will stay in Michigan because he's having an affair with Gretchen Whitmer and I can prove it anecdotally. But the point being that for the better part of the last decade, they laughed. They laughed at cameraman Badan. They laughed at him when he fell through a locker. They laughed at him when he shit himself during our tiebreaker game of Ultimate Frisbee that was live streamed to the entire grade. They laughed when he reverse drifted into a pole in the parking lot. They laughed because this is a guy who spent his entire career in public education playing Clash of Clans and getting radicalized by Alex Jones. And I laughed too because it was epic, but still, I foretold, John Mate the Wise foretold the prophecy of the revenge tour. Now you look at the guy, he's a crypto genius, got a trad GF lockdown, the content is flowing, the content kitchen doesn't close, so go sub to the Badan Chan, link is in the description, because at the end of the day, we're probably not all gonna make it. But damn it, if cameraman Badan makes it, that's enough for me. Everything burns except the breakfast, an introduction to waffle escapism. Ebook coming soon. Hey guys, if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications so that you are notified in the event that I post, which I do, and you'd want to be notified about that, I would imagine, and then you're also going to want to share the video with a friend. That last one's not a, like a button, that's more of a, an independent thing, there's no real real share, I mean there is a share button, but that just kind of like prompts you to, to have the agency to go ahead and do that at your own accord. So. I would imagine that the average viewer is doing like maybe 1.5 of these if we had to, to get the mean, mean figure for the response from the audience. But, uh, you know, that like 0.5% that does all five actions, we love the 0.5%. We love the 7%. We love the 0.5%. We love the 93% more than the 7%, frankly. But not like a gay way, you know, like a, like a, like a, like a, What's camaraderist? That's not a word. In a, in a way that it conveys camaraderie. And they don't want you to think that's epic. They want you to think that's gay because they don't want you to form bonds with other men. They don't want you to kiss the homies goodnight because uh, it will help you bond with them. And so they tell you that it's gay. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. Kiss the homies goodnight. Unless you think you're going to enjoy it. That'd be, that'd be, that's really what it is. If someone like won't kiss you goodnight as a homie, it's like, what do you think you're going to enjoy it? No. Like, do you enjoy helping your friend move? No, you do it because it's going to make you guys bonded. You do it because you're friends, right? I don't enjoy kissing the homies goodnight, but I do it for the same reason. Like, that's my friend, obviously. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. May God bless America. 